Hello, and welcome back to The Crime Reel. For today's true crime narration, we shall be looking at the lives of Diane Zamora, David Graham, and Adrienne Jones, and how a twisted love story led to three promising futures being destroyed. David Christopher Graham was born on the 2nd of November 1977. David was the youngest of three children and grew into a hard-working, intelligent young man. He was known as being a perfect guy, with some of the words used to describe him including good-looking, polite, sporty, brilliant and athletic. From an early age, David had decided to pursue a career in the military. Diane Michelle Zamora was born in Crowley, Texas on the 21st of January 1978. She was the eldest child having three younger siblings. Her mother was a nurse who worked hard to support the family and at times would hold down three different jobs in order to make ends meet. Diane's father was an electrician who was often out of work which led to the family having financial difficulties. They ended up living with Diane's grandparents who were very religious and very strict. Diane worked hard at school and achieved excellent grades and like David wanted a military career. Adrienne Jessica Jones was born on the 18th of June 1979 in Tarrant County, Texas. She was the oldest of three children born to Linda and Bill Jones. Her mother, Linda, was a massage therapist and her father, Bill, was a heavy equipment mechanic. She lived with her parents, two younger brothers and three dogs. She grew into a smart and popular young lady who was well known within the local community. She was both an outstanding athlete and an honor roll student. Adrienne had ambitions to study at Texas A&M University and after initially wanting to be a vet had decided to pursue a career as a behavioral analyst. In 1991, David and Diane, both aged 13, met for the first time at a civil air patrol meeting at Spinks Airport. They immediately hit it off and became close friends. Diane went on to attend Crowley High School, whilst David attended Mansfield High School, which was around 20 miles away. Adrienne also went on to attend Mansfield High School. Despite being in different year groups, David and Adrienne became acquainted through their involvement in the cross-country track team. In August 1995, Diane and David's close friendship turned to romance and from the moment they started dating, their relationship became incredibly intense. After just over a month of dating, the pair became engaged and set their wedding date for five years later in order to directly follow their college graduations. Two months after their engagement, on November the 4th, 1995, David and Adrienne attended a regional track competition. According to David, at the end of the competition, he gave Adrienne a lift home. He stated that Adrienne then suggested that they drive to a quiet location. The couple stopped and had sex in the car. After dropping Adrienne home, David, who was apparently racked with guilt, went to visit Diane, taking her a cuddly toy as a gift. Diane recalls that when David arrived on that particular evening, he seemed quite odd in his behaviour. It wasn't for another month, at the beginning of December, that Diane became increasingly suspicious of David's behaviour. They ended up having a heated argument, during which she questioned his faithfulness. David admitted to Diane that he had had sex with Adrienne on that one occasion. Diane flew into a violent rage. Not only had David abused her trust, but she believed that he had tarnished their entire relationship, as until that point, they had only ever slept with each other. Crying hysterically, she started banging her head against the wall and floor, screaming that she could not live with this pain. David tried to calm Diane, but she was inconsolable. She believed her life to be over, as David had destroyed the purity of their relationship. Diane then started screaming that the only way they would ever be able to cleanse their love was by killing Adrian. David, seeing the intense pain that he had inflicted upon Diane with his actions, wanted to do anything to make it right for her. The pair then quickly formulated a plan. 
David would invite Adrienne to go out with him, drive her to a remote area where he and Diane would kill her. They would then weigh her body down and throw her into the lake. At around 9pm on Sunday, December the 3rd of 1995, Adrienne returned home from her job at a local takeaway. She then convinced her mum, Linda, to go to the nearby 24-hour gym for a workout after which the pair returned home. At around 10.45pm that evening, the phone rang at the Jones family home. Adrienne answered and her mother overheard her talking to David. Despite Linda telling Adrienne that it was too late for phone calls, Adrienne continued to speak to David, who was seemingly upset about something. Sometime between 11pm and 1am that night, Adrienne sneaked out of the house to meet up with David. David drove her towards Joe Paul Lake. Unknown to Adrienne, Diane was hidden in the back of the car. When David stopped the car at the lake, Diane immediately revealed herself and confronted Adrienne. Whilst all three were sat in the car, Diane attacked her with one of the weights which she had brought with them. Adrienne fought back and managed to get out of the car. As she tried to run away, David jumped out of the car and shot her. As she fell to the ground, he approached her and shot her a second time at close range to ensure that she was dead. Leaving Adrienne where she had fallen, the pair then quickly drove away from the scene. Despite it being the early hours of the morning, they stopped at the home of one of David's friends in order to clean themselves up. The friend, seeing Diane's wound from a previous car accident and sensing the tension between the couple, did not ask any questions, assuming that they were in the middle of a fight. Diane and David then returned to Diane's home where they cleaned the blood from the car. David then left, taking the handgun and weights with him, which he subsequently hid in the loft space at his home. Diane wrote an entry in her diary, which simply said, Adrienne, 1.38 a.m. The following morning, Adrienne's mother, Linda, was awoken at 6 a.m. to the sound of her daughter's alarm clock. When the alarm continued, she went into her daughter's room to find that the bed was made and Adrienne was nowhere to be seen. Assuming that she had gone for an early morning run, which was not an uncommon event, Linda saw no cause for an alarm. It wasn't until two hours later, at around 8am, when Adrienne still hadn't returned, that Linda became concerned and contacted the police. Meanwhile, the authorities had already been notified of a body in an open field alongside Seaton Road in Mansfield. By late afternoon, the two cases had been connected and the family were informed that Adrienne had been murdered. The following day, the news of Adrienne's death was announced in her high school. A private family memorial service was held on the 7th of December, with a separate memorial service being held at Adrienne's high school the following week. In attendance was David crying and sharing condolences with fellow students. Despite police efforts, the crime remained unsolved and family, friends and locals tried to piece their lives back together. Six months after the murder, on 28th of June 1996, Diane and David were featured in the local newspaper, proudly talking of how they had both earned places at prestigious military academies. A week later, they both left Mansfield to pursue their fledgling military careers. Diane went to the US Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland, and David to the US Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs. During her time at the academy, Diane would often talk to her roommates about how she and David were linked together forever. She eventually boasted to them that her boyfriend had killed for her. Obviously distressed by what they had heard, the roommates contacted the academy authorities, who referred this information to the police. The police soon found the handgun and weights in the loft space at David's house. Shortly after, on 6th of September 1996, both Diane and David were arrested and charged with Adrienne's murder. Both of them were interviewed at length by the police, during which time they both confessed to the murder. Their stories concurred in that they killed Adrienne because she and David had had sex, 
they chose to drive her to the remote lake where Diane beat her around the head before David shot her. However, they both later recanted their confessions, stating that they had been made under duress. At this point, they turned on each other, both claiming that the other was the murderer. Diane and David were tried separately. Linda Jones, Adrian's mother, requested that the death penalty wasn't an option in the event of them being found guilty. She did not want other parents to go through the pain of losing a child in the way that she had. Diane's trial began in February 1998. Despite her earlier confession, she now claimed that she was at the scene of the crime but did not participate in the killing. A crucial matter in the trial was to determine who the dominating force was in David and Diane's relationship. The trial lasted two weeks, during which time various witnesses stated that Diane had shown no remorse for her part in Adrienne's death. The jury deliberated for approximately six hours before finding Diane guilty of murder. She stood emotionless as she was sentenced to life imprisonment. She would be eligible for parole after 40 years. David's trial began in July 1998. During his trial, both the coach and another member of the track team testified that David had not driven Adrienne home from the meeting on the 4th of November 1995 the night which he claimed was when he had sex with Adrienne. It also came to light that despite his supposedly perfect exterior, David had a very controlling and domineering personality when away from public gaze. He was prone to violent outbursts and it is reported that his mother had actually moved out of the family home because she feared living with him. On 24th of July 1998, David was found guilty of murder. He was also sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 40 years. 10 years later, in 2008, David admitted that his original confession to the police was true and that he should have pleaded guilty to murder at his original trial. With all of her appeal routes exhausted, Diane was interviewed for the Dateline show in 2007. She once again changed her story, this time to state that her and David were on the verge of breaking up and David had used the murder to tie her to him indefinitely. A polygraph test used during the recording of the program did nothing to prove that she was telling the truth. Both Diane and David will be eligible for parole from September the 5th, 2036. The matter of whether or not David and Adrienne had sex on the night of 4th of November 1995 has never been resolved. David's story on this changed multiple times over the course of the police interviews and trials. Together with the coach and fellow teammates' testimony that David hadn't given Adrienne a lift home that night, it would seem quite likely that David made up the entire story to make Diane jealous. And for this, Adrienne paid with her life. Thanks for listening to that story. I have one additional bit of information that I couldn't fit into the story, but it's just a little bit more information for you. Whilst in prison, Diane began writing to another prison inmate by the name of Stephen Mora. Stephen was in prison for auto theft and burglary, and the pair soon began a postal relationship. Despite never having met in person, on June the 17th, 2003, Diane and Stephen were married by double proxy with Diane's mother and an unidentified male standing in for the couple. Unsurprisingly, this marriage ended in divorce. It is believed this is the first proxy marriage in Bexar County. Well, thanks very much for listening to that story. Please leave any comments down below. In today's petty crime, our latest suspect is Batgirl. She's owned by Wanda. Batgirl was found on the side of the interstate when she was just four weeks old. She then nursed her with a baby bottle and formula. She doesn't like anybody else, but she loves Wanda. Follows her around the house. There are two dogs in the family as well, but Batgirl controls them as well. And Batgirl likes to sleep every night with her stuffed monkey, as seen in the photo. And the final suspect today has been sent in by Fanaticat. 
This is Shiloh, her tuxedo cat. He was adopted over a year ago and he's two and a half years old now and he's very spoilt. Thanks very much for that. Thanks very much for listening to the crime reel. Stay safe. Goodbye. In 1997, there was a TV movie made called Love's Deadly Triangle, The Texas Cadet Murder. Goodbye.